Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got some special guests joining us this morning. Who we got? Who we got? We have Matt Kraft and David Lipper. Good morning. Morning. Good morning. Now, yeah. you guys are from the Slink It mobile app, right? Yeah, well, I'm actually from the Slink It mobile application. David is from the. Uh, the I'm a go ahead, director, a uh, actor. I got a movie called Wolf Mountain coming out with Mallow Trevejo, Danny Trejo, Tobin Bell. So uh, it's coming out May 9th, and, and Max app is, is going to work with our movie as, as the launch. Okay, well, explain what what's the Slink It app is. So basically, Slink It allows consumers or gives consumers the option to purchase items that they see on television in real time, and that's without a QR code or without interrupting the show. Genius. So basically what that means is all you have to do is hit the trigger button mm -hmm. on the smartphone while you're in front of the TV, and what is on television at that moment in time that you hit the trigger button will appear on your smartphone. Didn't Amazon you, have some type of technology like that? Or no, I no, they don't have anything like that. Okay. Uh, they have something where you have to go to a website, but nothing where it's real time on video. We're actually the first in world history to produce this type of so application. So it's like a Shazam for uh, movies. Yeah. Yes, sir. So, so how does it work? Is that every movie or does the, the movie or picture that you're watching have to be part of it as well? So yeah, so if any kind of movie or television show that's integrated would slink it, you know, so just like any other. So yeah, like absolutely. Coming to America's on, right? And yeah. I want to. I want the outfit that Eddie Murphy wore. I want to see where it came from. Eddie Murphy, Coming to America might not be through the slink it thing, so you might not be able to see it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But new movies, yes. Absolutely. So, you know, our whole situation is to, or our whole obligation is to kind of get these different uh, companies like David uh, to licensing deals, you know, sign them to licensing agreements, and then be able to share the revenue with them because we're now able to monetize their content that they normally couldn't monetize because they couldn't quantify the cost at first. Mm -hmm. of putting uh, These brands couldn't for putting items on television. And so now with Slink It, they're able to not only quantify uh, their ROI, but they can quantify the cost of placing items on TV. And then we share revenue with the executive producers in the studios. I always felt like that would be, and, and I feel like I've had this convo before. Yeah. Maybe I just had a convo about the idea, but that would be like something great for a company like Amazon. Oh, you're yeah. already yeah. on Amazon. You know what Amazon Absolutely. is known for. It, Absolutely. it would make sense for them to partner with y'all in some way, shape, or form. Absolutely. They need I, that kind of technology. Yeah, I would th I would think so. And I think even more so uh, Netflix, a company like Netflix, because mm -hmm. Netflix is kind of like, you know, they, they are subscription-based and they need advertisement, um, something that they can make money off advertisement. So with our application, it works well. You know, we can But Amazon integrate. could take you right to Amazon. At, yeah, you know that's, true. that's true. That's true. That's yeah. true. And and just so you know, uh, Charlemagne, that our our application also kind of like have we have agreements with a lot of the retailers out there to to sell their products. So that's how we're able to recognize a lot of a uh, lot of information off the movies and be able to show similar items to the items that are on the movie because we have a uh, you know, and we're hoping to reach a database like Amazon one mm -hmm. day. But right now, we we, we don't have it right there just now. I so, want to invest. Yeah. I know other people that I want to invest so I need to be invested too. God damn it. I know what's going on. Don't talk to, I know what's going on around here. Right? Well, okay. you know, the problem for us as filmmakers is we're killing ourselves to try and get enough money to, to make the money back, mm -hmm. right? It's like you make a movie for, let's say, $10 million, but the sales are, let's say, five. So how do we get there? So we go to places like Mississippi where I shot three movies last year and we get a nice little rebate or a tax credit. Um, but how do we make up the difference? And yeah. so we do product placement, right? I put the phone in, mm -hmm. in, in the shot. If I talk about the phone, I get a little bit more money. And then Mac and I bump into each other New Year's Eve in Cabo last yeah. year. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm telling him about my movies. He's telling me about this idea. I'm like, this is genius, you know, because we need all the help we can get, us independent film guys. Mm -hmm. You know, I've made 15 movies since COVID hit. And it's tough, man. Mm -hmm. It's tough. It's like there's so many avenues. There's this streamer and that streamer. And the prices are getting down and down and down. That's why the WGA just went on strike That's now right. because they're having a hard time dealing with all the gentrification of streaming, which is mm -hmm. basically saying it's more and more and more, meaning the prices are going down and down and down. And we have anybody with an iPhone these days can shoot a movie. Mm -hmm. And so it's like where's the barrier in quality and how do the guys like us who are making them for the millions – uh, compete against someone who's making it for five hundred dollars and mm -hmm. editing it on his home uh, computer. So anyway, this is not just great for the consumer. It's not just great um, for 
Amazon potentially one day to buy them out. I think you're totally right, by the <laughs> yeah. way. But it's great for us as filmmakers to have another revenue stream. Who How much does it cost the, to make a movie? Oh. I was gonna say, who puts all the clothes in and, and does all that that part of it? Because I mean, you watch a movie, there could be clothes, it could be bracelets, right. it could be glasses, right. it could be the phone, it could be water, it could be juice, it could be so many different things. So who does that job? So we work with the team, but um, you know, pretty soon we're gonna have a fully automated system. Mm -hmm. Right now it's kind of semi-automated because I, I had to get out. But uh, we work with you know, T David's team, for example, and they let us know exactly what's in there. And we can also find that information on our own as well. But we, we, we go through them because if, if I don't know if you guys seen the sample videos, but we implemented Emily in Paris. Like I have Jeannie and Georgia from Netflix and mm -hmm. we did that without them. So, you know, the application, we can do it without the, uh, the movie production companies. It's just that the way my business model works, we can either earn money for everything that's purchased off of television, right, uh, through a sale, mm -hmm. and, or we, and, or, and we earn money for from the product placement. Because like that's I said, right. now we can put uh, mm -hmm. a, a lamp or, or a shirt on you or a jacket on Tom Cruise or Nike can say, hey, we're gonna do a drop and nobody can watch Mission Impossible. I mean, nobody can buy these Nikes until they watch the movie Mission Impossible Ooh. and people can, People could literally have to go there, send millions of sneakerheads to the to the uh, to the movie, and then uh, and our application will know if you are in front of that TV. We know how many people are in front of the TV, and if you slink that button, we'll know that if you you purchased it from there, or you or the, the shoe will sort of like be released mm -hmm. to allow you to purchase it from the movie because it knows that you're in front of that movie watching it at that time. Y'all still letting people buy into the company? Uh, Absolutely, man. Okay. Absolutely. I want to invest. <laughs> this is a great idea. I mean, I've, I had, you, I, I've thought about this before. I don't know. Yeah. I, for what, some reason, I don't know why I thought Amazon was already doing this. No, reason. no. Actually, wow. I, I met with um, CBS um, exec. I met with Comcast. Uh, even one of the Comcast exec, executives told me they've been trying for 30 years. And she said she wrote the memo mm -hmm. to the, uh, the founder herself that hey we need to figure out how to purchase items off of movies in real time mm -hmm. without interrupting the show mm -hmm. right uh, because that was the main thing people was pausing the tv and then letting you shop well we don't have to put a qr code on there we don't have to interrupt the show right and um, and then she said if uh she said they've been trying to figure this out and i was the first one to do it so this is uh this is 10 years in the making man like this is something that didn't come overnight it took a lot of hard work, a lot of outside the box thinking. I got patents on the technology, and uh, we we're, we have other patents that that we believe that we're going to get as well. Uh, I have a great patent attorney, so yeah, it's a it's a great story on how we got here. And, and what's you know, your background? How, how did you start? I'm with Charlamagne. I'm, I want to invest yeah. too. But what's your story? How did how it's, did you start? Yeah, so it's crazy because like I'm I'm so from one I'm from Denver, Colorado, mm -hmm. and um, I actually went to high school there. Uh, went to college there, but I, I've been building and doing crazy things once, since I was in like in seventh grade. Mm -hmm. And then I had gotten ninth grade and we had engineering classes at a, a high school called George Washington out there in Denver. And so I've been taking all these like uh, engineering classes and and uh, getting kind of acclimated. I built my mom her, uh, our, her first like flood alarm when I was in ninth grade. Mm -hmm. So I've always been in the tech, you know, and I, I played football too. So it's crazy because I, I came out of Pasadena before I got uh, before I went to the uh, uh, to Colorado State, and I was like the fifth ranked corner in the country when I came out. But my I'll passion, smoke you, my bro. passion, <laughs> <laughs> right. catch anything over you, bro. <laughs> yeah. Don't let my size. Uh, yeah, hey, I'm he, not messing with you, man. He's way too short. <laughs> <laughs> he's way too short. Look at him. Max yeah. like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So so no, it's um, I I put it like this. It's it's been a a, a long journey, but I've been in technology pretty much all my life, but I didn't graduate with a with a tech degree. I graduated with a social science degree. Mm -hmm. And it's only because as you kind of understand black males when we were in college, sometimes they don't want you to flunk out. So they kind of talked me out of my engineering degree and I let them, but, but I knew yeah. that I was going back. So as soon as I graduated, I went straight back into tech, worked for some big companies. And, uh, and um, you know, this this idea was actually born in uh, Duval County, Jacksonville, Florida. Hey. And so once I, once I, I put it together, I moved right back to Denver, and uh, because I knew it was more tech of tech industry, and uh, I made it happen. And then, um, you know, it's just a, it was a long, long fight, man. I could tell you, you mm -hmm. know, raising money to building the tech, you know, worried about people, you know, Stealing not really ideas. exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. I was flying under stealth mode, and you guys probably understand. Why the name Slink it? 
Because, you know, I think Slinky. I'm, I was born in 1978, so hey, I think Slinky. So, so, so you're, yeah, you're right on, actually. So Slinky stands for synchronize and link, but I wanted a verb, right? I wanted something catchy, something that will say, hey, you know what? If me and you was watching TV and, and I saw something on television or you saw something mm-hmm. and you were like, hey, I, you know, I want to buy that, those, the, that shirt off of, uh, let's say, uh, Martin Lawrence, um, then I could just say, why don't you just slink it? Mm-hmm. But it came from the slinky because all I imagine you have your smartphone hitting that button and just like a slinky, it mm-hmm. goes out, grab what's ever on TV mm-hmm. and then pulls it back to you Hilarious. and to the, to the smartphone. And so that you're, you're, you're right on. That's exactly where that name came from. David, uh, how much does it cost to do a movie nowadays? I mean, the, the short answer is it can cost whatever you want to spend. I know a guy, a friend of mine made a movie for $600. What? <laughs> A friend of mine made a movie for six hundred dollars. Was it his own short house? Film? It's literally he had real short film. It's it's called <laughs> I shouldn't say it, but it's called Charman, and it's on uh, <laughs> it's it's on what all the platforms. He Tubi? had he had a Tubi, all of them, and he had people shoot themselves during lockdown on their phones, and then he it was a brilliant idea. He took the footage, edited it on his computer, and put it out there, and did his own little sound mix and everything. Um, for me, I can't make a movie really for under a million anymore. Um, it's just. If you want any kind of name actor, I mean, look at Hunk Club uh, that just came out April 4th. That's got Mickey Rourke, Mina Suvari, uh, and Casper Van Dien. I produced that one and wrote it. Uh, you know, we made it for one five, and that's as down and dirty as, as I could do. We shot it in beautiful Mississippi. I'm mm-hmm. a big fan of Mississippi right now. Mm-hmm. And, um, and that's the thing, but we can't even get to that million five because it's so competitive out there. Mm-hmm. And you know, everything's going AVOD now. Like you said, Tubi, this is the future, mm-hmm. right? It's like the TVOD windows dying. TVOD, the transactional VODs, mm-hmm. that's where you're you're spending your three ninety nine, four ninety nine at Amazon iTunes. Our movie Wolf Mountain is coming out May 9th. It's gonna start on the TVODs. So you can watch it on iTunes, rent it for three ninety nine, four ninety nine. But then what happens? Then you gotta get a subscription VOD deal, an S VOD deal with your Hulu Netflix, Paramount Plus, but they got a ton of content. They got all the studios feeding them. How many movies can they buy? How many movies have they mm-hmm. built up at this point? And so everything's going to AVOD now. And this is really where there's no barrier to entry. It could be a $600 movie. You could be a $6 million movie. And advertising is what's paying. It's like we're gone back to TV. Mm-hmm. We're back to TV commercials, mm-hmm. except TV commercials don't work because people change the channel, because they use their DVRs. Mm-hmm. So AVOD is the new network television and it's taking over, no question about it. We just hope what happened with Amazon doesn't happen with Tubi and these other guys. You know, Amazon used to pay us 40, 40 cents an hour for, for, for movie streaming, right? So if I streamed the two hour movie, I'd get 80 cents. Mm-hmm. Now it's a penny an hour, mm-hmm. right? So Tubi we're, and, and YouTube and Pluto and freebie these are all those avod platforms you know right now they're paying pretty good rev shares but when when do they do what amazon did and say we got enough movies you want to be on our platforms we're going to slash it so that's what's scaring the business right now the business is in a bit of a free fall and i it's not a coincidence that now's the time the wga is striking and you may see more strikes you know Mm -hmm. sag just said they're not going to strike for right now um, but who knows? Their contract's up in the, at the end of June, and then what happens? Right. Um, the DGA is up uh, at the end of next month, too. So. Question, question, if you shot a movie for, let's say, 1.5, but you decided, you know, I'm not going to do the screamers. I'm just going to do direct-to-consumer. I'm going to create up my create my own platform and sell it. Could you still use the Slinkit technology with Yeah, that? the Slinkit is just like Shazam. I mean, that, okay. I think that's the best way to say it. And mm-hmm. I've, Mac has, has brought me through the prototypes, and I've obviously seen this tested on my film. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, the bottom line is... Just like you know, you hear a song, you put up your phone, and it's like, oh, it's that song. Oh, well, I can buy it on iTunes for mm-hmm. two ninety nine, whatever it is. It's the same concept. I like that shirt Dave's wearing. Thank you very much. Pretty nice shirt. <laughs> hey, let me slink it. I like the fact that he says it's a verb, kind of like Google it, slink yeah. it. Right. Um, and there it is. I click a button, and like he said, we're not stopping the movie. It's not interrupting. It's not talking to somebody. You just did this while you're watching the movie, and then boom, you bought yourself the shirt. So wh- why not so, go direct to consumer with movies as opposed to uh, putting them on the Tubi's? Well, we are going direct to consumer through Amazon, through iTunes. But if I put, you mean like build my own website? So the to percentage, sell it? You said the percentage. How much do they take? Oh, they take. You know, it depends. Like usually, iTunes will take like seventy five percent. Yeah. So know? why not do direct to consumer where you can just have somebody pay ten dollars for the movie? Well, I mean, I mean, the only other way, other way to go direct to consumers have my own website and have my own infrastructure, mm-hmm. right? 
what people are doing is creating their own YouTube channels, right? That's probably the best mm. way to get direct to consumer. I build David Lipper's YouTube channel for all my David Lipper movies. That's great. The problem is you got to get a certain amount of subscribers mm -hmm. to hit that number where you're actually getting real money for your uh, advertising dollars. How much does YouTube take? I'm not sure what the split is on revenue. I can just tell you that they're pretty close to Tubi, Jesus if not better. Yeah. yeah. So why not just do your own website and do it like mm -hmm. how Louis C. Case do it, how my guy Andrew <laughs> yeah. Schultz did it? Like we just need a channel. You just need a channel with enough mm -hmm. subscribers mm -hmm. and enough traffic, and then you'll make the money. You're are, right. Are are the right person promoting the movie, mm -hmm. right? If you do the right movie with the right people, then they can just send people to Well, look, if I'm Tom Cruise and I say I'm gonna create the Tom Cruise channel, I'm sure I'll get a million subscribers, mm -hmm. you know, within an hour of putting it live. That's one way to go, for sure, if you've got a major brand. Or if you're the 85 South show, you know what I mean? That's like, right. Yeah, those guys could push traffic. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but that's what these mm -hmm. YouTube channels have done. You know, my, my movie, The Unwilling, is on a movie, uh, it's, I think it's called The Movie Channel, it's on YouTube. They got five million subscribers. Mm -hmm. My movie's got six million views. That's great. That's great money. They take half. That's my split Damn. with those guys. They take half the revenue. I get half the revenue. Um, now, if I had that channel, I'd get it all. Mm -hmm. But I don't have five million subscribers like they do. I don't know if I'd get that six million downloads like they got. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the problem. But if you could build your own channel, that's the way. If you want to go direct to consumer without building a website and shipping, I mean, I don't know who the hell. Uh, gets DVDs anymore, but shipping DVDs. Mm -hmm. Hey, we're in Walmart. This is the funniest thing. My distributor said, hey, I got us the end cap for Walmart, for, for Hunt Club. Mm -hmm. I said, what are you talking about? He said, the end cap for the DVDs. I'm like, people, die, <laughs> people buy DVDs? <laughs> That's still going on? <laughs> I don't even have a DVD player. Me neither. Me neither. Right. Who's, who, who are these people? <laughs> but crazy. people still buy DVDs. But anyway, yeah, going direct to consumer, I'm with you. And I think, I think right now YouTube is the best option. You know, otherwise you're giving the man half your money. What if you want to get something uh, off one of these movies that doesn't come up on the app? Um, well, our our application is is designed to show you what's there and then something similar. So mm -hmm. even if you don't get that, it'll show you something similar to what. Not as dope because even cars, you can do cars. Yeah. You can see a car drive by, click it, and then you can be a car that you want to see the price or get information about that. Absolutely, so cool. we do we do products and we do services. So it it doesn't matter if the movie was shooting and. You know, a, a hotel in the Marriott, for example. Like it, the the application will pull up the Marriott, tell you all the things about mm -hmm. the pool and everything else. Or like you said, a car, Lexus. Is like we have movies. Actually, his movie right. is pulling up Got the Lexus, Lexus the Audi yeah. that's in the movie. Uh, sends the consumer directly about what the, what colors you can buy it in, the Let's wheel go. packages, and et cetera. So, and we even got original it, stuff like the Wolfman. We got yeah. a Wolfman in, in the yeah. Legend of Wolf Mountain, and and that guy. You know, we have a full yeah. Wolfman suit. Yeah, it can do costumes yeah. and everything. So, like the Garden of the Galaxies or no, whatever. I mean, it's it's it genius. Can, yeah, it can it's pull genius. up the the if an eight year old was slinking it, it'll it'll pull up not only the costume, it'll pull up the action figure, for example. I mean, that's yeah. associated to that right. to that person. So, I mean, it's a way that you guys can make money too, because you know you get like a local dealership, let's say Manhattan, whatever dealership. Absolutely. And now when you click it, even though the movie plays in L.A. You click it, Manhattan. Manhattan pays for that 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 promo. Absolute, and absolutely. it goes to Manhattan dealership yeah. or mom and pop store or, or Sephora or, or you know Riri's line. So it's dope. How oh, can yeah. people download the app? Get more of your information. Your at your Instagram, social media, and handles and all that good stuff. Yeah, yeah. So so you basically can go to Slinkit dot com um, to 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 go to the website and and check it out. There's a lot of information there. There's information there about investing and and et cetera. Then um, let's say for instance that you wanted to to you know, follow me. You can follow Mac, me, Matt Craft, Matt Craft the fourth mm -hmm. um, on Instagram. The yeah, there's I'm four like, of you. There's there's three more of me. <laughs> <laughs> my uh, my daddy named me that. Um, and we said, and, by the way, that we would help Mac out and um, everybody who's listening to this show or watching it. Um, yeah. If they sign up in the next three days, we're going to give them um, two tickets uh, to two people for each premiere. I got coming up. I uh, got two more coming up after this one. Mm -hmm. One's for uh, Joe Baby with uh, Harvey Keitel and Ron yeah. Perlman, mm -hmm. and I got one called Murder at Hollow Creek with Mickey Rourke and um, Penelope Ann Miller and a whole bunch of mm -hmm. other people. So we're gonna give away some premiere tickets to the. W famous when is this? Because we're not gonna post this until we get equity in the company. So. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> well, <laughs> well, well <laughs> the Curse of Wolf. Smart man over there. <laughs> All right. So you guys want to come to LA? The Curse of Wolf Mountain premiere is on Wednesday. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, I don't forget anyone signed up in t- time for that one. But Joe Baby and Murder Hall Creek will be last quarter this year. Um, so somewhere around Christmas time, we'll have those premieres going uh, at the famous Chinese theater in Hollywood where we do all our premieres. I, I got two more questions. How does the app know specifically which product it wants? Because at any given time, there could be a whole bunch of products on the screen. So how do you know specifically? Oh, I man, want it, it, is, it is nice. What it does is like when, when you hit the trigger button, it, it'll pull up the items that are on the screen at the time. Right. And so you can filter those items or let's say if they're associated to you, like your hat or your necklace or your, you know, your shoes or whatever, then I can click on you. And then as soon as I click on you, I can, I will see all the things that you're wearing at that moment in time. And so what's sweet about this application, you can like Instagram and Facebook, how you can follow someone, Mm -hmm. you can follow someone on TV in real time. So if I saw somebody that I I, I didn't know and I triggered the button and I was like, oh, that's, that's a pretty good guy. I can Mm -hmm. follow him at that moment. So not only can follow, you can like the clothes, you can like the person, like I said, you can add the items to your shopping cart in real time or you can purchase it in real time. So it gives you a lot of different options. And if you follow that person, it's the, the system's designed to let you know where that person's going to be on television and it, it schedules that for you. And so that way it can be topic generated or mm-hmm. purchase, like, you know, let's say if I, I follow a fishing show or mm-hmm. uh, follow fishing, then it's going to let me know where all the fishing shows are at on TV. And then when I go to that fishing show, I can buy the new fishing gear. So, so the whole point is that at some time very soon, we, you know, we're hoping to, to get this all over TV. And just so you know, it's right now does uh, the sound recognition. It's going to be able to do facial recognition, any kind of visual uh, image recognition as well, and return those items to you at the time that you hit the trigger button. Wow. So that's what's unique about this. It's not just sound recognition. We covered all facets of uh, the recognition technology. And, you know, there's a lot of products and shows and scenes. So who is responsible for inputting all this data? Yeah, so we, we can either be responsible ourselves, mm-hmm. like, like I said, in a, semi, uh, automa- a semi-automatic way, but pretty soon it's going to be, uh, the they just going to have a portal, and they're going to be able to enter their information like they capture anyway. So when like when he gathers information, they have a, a script. They, ha- they know what who's wearing what. And they're just going to use a portal, and 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 that portal is going to connect with our system. And so, just, just you like know, that. when we make a movie, right? The wardrobe head of wardrobe is going to make a wardrobe list. So there's going to yeah. itemize every single piece of wardrobe for each character. That's actually going to be in her book. Uh, the props master is going to have a props list. Every mm-hmm. prop that he has is going to go on his prop list. So we're going to have all that information. I mean, a proper movie is going to have it all properly logged. So it's really easy for us to just upload that in Intel and give it to Mac. And that's yeah. what we did. We gave him a copy of the movie. We gave him our prop list from the prop master, we, from the art department. We gave him the wardrobe list from the wardrobe lady, Jenna Latera, did a great job. Um, and then, you know, and then Mac just called me for any kind of other things that mm-hmm. weren't quite on the list. He said, hey, Dave, where'd you get this from? Yeah, because he just worked with me. He gave me an opportunity, like you said, when he when he heard about this. He was like, hey, Mac, all of Hollywood's going to want this. Um, you know, I'll be, I want to be the first movie. And I was just like, great, you know, let's, let's work together. And, uh, you know, just like any other startup, you know, you got to work through the kinks. Um, and so we, we figured it all out. And, and at this time, I already knew how to do it. I just needed this the first movie to to work with me to to make it work. And so gotcha. that's how we did it. And it's like you said, I mean, this isn't necessarily a new idea. We've just been waiting for Execution. someone to figure it out. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. you know, when I met Mac on the beach in Cabo, he's like, I figured it out. I'm like, no, you didn't. He's like, I did. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to show it to you. That's dope. So, yeah. um. We'll have our people connect with your people, and we'll figure out this equity thing. <laughs> <laughs> since I know, since everybody else here got it. Oh, you got to get it. <laughs> Doc and Eddie. Well, and once you see it, you go really, I, I want you guys to really take a look at the mm-hmm. footage, man. That's that, that's going to blow you away. All right. Well, Matt Craft, we appreciate you. David Lippo. And Slink It. Make sure you download it now. And it's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Wake that ass up. Early in the morning. The Breakfast Club.